puts a, a bag on the counter and he um, he passes a note to the teller. The teller gets really gets a really shocked look on her face, and I can see that she is um, scared. Then he passes the bag under the, the window, and she she takes it and fills it with money. She then gives it to the bank robber, and he then runs out of the store. Okay, so I'm telling it in present tense, but you understand, you know, I'm kind of giving you a play by play of what happened in the past as if it were, you know, happening right now. So that's kind of what's happening here. So um, it's December. Where? Where? Where's? Um, where is it at? It's December in Puerto Rico. Hace calor in la isla. It's, it's hot in the island, right? Hace calor. En la isla tropical. Puerto Rico, donde pasa unas vacaciones con su familia. He goes to Puerto Rico where he spends vacation with his family. Okay. So, obviously, baseball is not being played right now. Baseball season ends with the, um, uh, what's the final series? Um, the World Series in October. So, you know, baseball players, los baseballistas, no juegan en noviembre, diciembre, enero. Some of them start back in February with training camps. Okay. So, um, he's off on vacation in Puerto Rico con su familia. Um, pero algo ocurre. But something happens. Okay. So, over in Managua, the capital of Nicaragua, hay un terremoto desastroso. I, there's a terrible, a, a disastrous earthquake, okay? Um, and he hears about it on La Noche Buena. La Noche Buena, Christmas Eve. Okay, so go ahead and um, continua, Emma. Um, tiene que actuar um, organiza Ayuda para sus hermanos. Para, para sus para, para sus hermanos. Nicaragüenses. 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 Sí. Los puertorriqueños. Pequeños. Pequeños. Um, country. Voy en en followed by I or E says the ha sound. Okay. So generosamente. 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 Muy bien. La mente busca un avión. 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 Solo puede encontrar un avión viejo. Llena el avión de medicinas, medicina, medicinas, uh -huh. comida y otras provisiones para las víctimas. Del terremoto, Clemente está en la cabina de ma mando con el piloto. El avión despega momentos después. Otro desastre, el avión. Okay, okay, what is that? Calle. Calle. Calle en las aguas del Caribe, Clemente muy Muere. Muere. Pierde su vida. Okay. So, what is that mean? What does that mean? Tells you right there. Pierde su vida. What does he lose? He loses his life. Okay, so so what's happening here? Okay, so um, he gets the news about the um, terremoto, the earthquake, in Noche Buena, Christmas Eve. He thinks, yo tengo que actuar. I have to act. 
so he organizes help for his Nicaraguan brothers, you know, brothers and sisters, it says. Los Puerto Ricanos contribuyen generosamente. So the Puerto Ricans are like, yeah, this is a big deal. So they, they give, they give, they give. He looks for an airplane. You know, of course, he has money, right? He Players weren't paid as much because this is back in the 70s, very early 70s. So players weren't paid as much, and they weren't as greedy back in the day. Um, sports players made a lot of money, but nowhere nearly as much money as they make nowadays. You didn't have all this as much sponsorship back in the day, and yeah, it was it was still you know, a decent job, a you know, really good job, but not as crazy it is today. So he had some money, especially compared to, um, you know, all of the people back at home in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico tends to be muy pobre, tends to be very poor. So he looks for a plane, but what does it say? Solo puede encontrar un avión viejo. What's viejo? Old. All he could find was an old plane. And they filled it. Llena el avión. He fills it with. The plane with medicinas, comida, y otras provisiones, provisiones para las víctimas. So he fills it with medicines, food, and other provisions, probably bedding and, you know, things like that, the basic necessities. Um, Clemente está en la cabina de mando, so he's in the, um, where do the pilots sit? I'm drawing a blank. What is it called? Um, they sit okay. in. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I was totally lost there, man. That's yeah. I don't think it's anything serious, but hopefully. <laughs> okay, so he's in the cockpit with um, with the pilot con el piloto. Yeah. So notice whenever you have numbers, it gives you the um, the translation down at the bottom. So el avión despega, um, takes off. Momentos después, otro desastre. Moments later, other disaster. El avión calle en las aguas del Caribe. Clemente muere, pierde su vida. So, how tragic. Here he is, is trying to help people. And then he loses his life, you know, tragically, trying to help somebody. Not only did he lose his life, but everything everybody had donated, donated goes down you know, in the plane, so who knows, maybe the plane was overloaded, you know, so good, good acts gone, gone bad, you know, just by, by no fault of anybody's, other than maybe the fact that it was an old plane, and it probably wasn't maintenance like it should have been, or like I said, it could have been too heavy, who knows, it was back in, in, uh, in 1972, so it was before I was born, not a whole lot before I was born, but before I was born. Okay, go ahead, um, Owen, and read our last two paragraphs for us. Uh, aquí tenemos el comentario de un famoso entrenador. Es imposible producir un filme sobre la vida de Roberto, no hay otro Roberto, no hay actor, pero tomar el papel, uh, parenthesis, el rol de Roberto Clemente. And then, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read the next one too. Right? Well, um, this is the commentator, he said, it's impossible to produce a film of him. There's no other Robert. There's no other, there's not even an actor that can even try to take his place. Okay? There's no there's nobody. Okay, go ahead, continue. Okay. Okay. Um, no hay un gran centro deportivo, pero las jóvenes de Puerto Rico que lleva el nombre de Roberto. La calle donde está la casa de Roberto lleve su nombre, pero la señora de Clemente su, uh, y sus hijos uh, prefer, uh, prefieren el nombre original cuando la calle lleva el nombre original Clemente viva, vive. 
Huh? You have to be someone fairly important, right? Okay. There's a and there's, there's centers like in El there's a Barbara Wackford Center with a swimming pool and everything. I don't know who Barbara Wackford is, but obviously she was someone. I know a couple things about her. She died. And she did something important in the Elk Grove area. But that's about all I know. I have no idea who she is. But because she has a swim center named after her, I know there's something special about her. And she's dead, which is terrible. Um, and he says that the street where um, is, they renamed the street where his house was after him. And his wife says, La Señora de Clemente. You could further the reason why because they said, he has, if it has the original name, then it's as if he's still dead. But he's not dead. So, if you ever see a street name, Trisha Abbey, you know I'm dead. Yeah. Emma says, turn your mic off, Owen. Unusually noisy. Okay. So, um, it said the last line. Cuando la calle lleve el nombre de original, Clemente vive. When the street bears the original name, Clemente still lives. So the family says, just keep it as it is. We don't want a reminder that that he's dead. So looking at the picture here, this is Managua. So this is um, Nicaragua. Remember, Nicaragua está en Centro America. Okay. Puerto Rico is kind of off the coast of Florida. So he flew from Puerto Rico. He was trying to anyways. From Puerto Rico to Central America. Nicaragua is about mid, the middle of Central America. So this is, and if you look carefully, my picture is kind of small. You might be able to see it better in yours, but to me it looks like there's a bunch of buildings um, kind of falling down um, and in destruction. Okay, so the it happened on the 23rd of December, and when did he find out about it? La Noche Buena, so he didn't find out about it until the 24th. On Christmas Eve. Okay, so as muy trágico, as muy trágico, very tragic. Okay, so we'll look at the um, the other reading. So when you're reading this, um, are you feeling very overwhelmed? Like, okay, I can read this. Um, yeah, um, I'm used to you having absolute science. I mean, silence. <laughs> um, so you should feel a bit lost, especially reading the last one we just read. Okay, there's a lot of new stuff. There's a lot of unfamiliar verbs and vocabulary. So you should be able to catch some of it, you know, um, especially the terms and the verbs we've studied in this chapter. But a lot of what was just in there um, is going to be very challenging stuff. So, um, Nehemiah, um, you said you read it some years ago. Did you read it in English or in Spanish? It might even be a movie about it. I'll look it up really quickly. Yeah. So there's, yeah, there's some specials about it. I don't know. I don't know that th there was one actually made. Okay. So anyways, looking at Pagina, English, okay. So let's look at Pagina 180, 180. Oh, and that's the other one I sent you. Um, a picture of it should say Los Deportes de Equipo. Okay. So, from what we learned for this chapter, Los Deportes de Equipo means what? Deportes sports, equipo is team, so team sports. So, el tenis, el tenis, el tenis es un deporte de equipo? El tenis es un, un deporte de equipo? Yo digo no. Yo digo no. I say no. Emma says sí. So I, there's, 
there's a way in which I would agree with you, Emma. So, like, if if you're playing tennis for so, like, a high school, the um, there's a tennis team, right? Or there's a tennis group or a tennis team. So, in that sense, you're a team. Um, and if you're playing one, and you kind of like when you um, have a tournament and you go back to the school and you say, well, our team took first place and they won this many matches and got this many awards. So then it's kind of announced as a team effort, but tennis, um, not within schools, um, generally is not. Um, yeah. So you have, you can have doubles. Um, and so those are really, really small teams, but um, it's not a big, big team participatory sport like say baseball and soccer and um football and football americano okay so so team sports i generally don't think is, is tennis so tennis wouldn't be most most popular sports are is there any other ones like tennis golf right so golf is definitely no es no es el golf se dice golf golf no es no es un deporte de, de equipo. Well, what else is there? Like ping pong. Ping pong, I think, is legally a sport. But uh, yeah, other than that, your your major, you know, more well-known, most popular sports are, are kind of a, a team, a team, a team sport. Okay, so let's look at los deportes de equipo. Como en Estados Unidos, los deportes de equipo tienen muchos aficionados en España y en Latinoamérica también. Okay, so like in the United States, um, team sports have many fans um, in, in Spain and in Latin America. Okay? Y sabemos, 180, 180, or went back one. Okay. So... Um, We know the biggest one, el más grande, el deporte más grande en España y Latinoamérica es, es el fútbol, sí. Okay, so when I say Latin America, what do I mean by Latin America? Okay, um, I mean any Spanish-speaking or any Latin-based speaking country, um, generally south of... Um, South of America, south of the United States, right? Canada, yes, it is a Latin based language, French, but it's also English. So we don't, Canada doesn't count. So it's generally everything south of the United States. So Central America, the Caribbean islands, and um, South America. So it's not con continentally based, it's just based on language. The languages are spoken. So I suppose. Um, like the Dutch, there's the Dutch Indies, there's some Netherlands, there's some little islands and in the Netherlands. And I would assume that those aren't included because Latin America, it has to be Latin based some way. So Brazil, who speaks Portuguese, would be Latin America. But I, I will have to look up. I do not think that Latin America includes those little Dutch and um, so the Dutch and the Netherlands. The Dutch is the Netherlands, aren't they? If you're from the Netherlands, you're Dutch. Okay, so I think that's about the only island, islands that are not, because otherwise they're owned by French. They speak French, um, Spanish, or Portuguese. Okay, um, go ahead, Nehemiah, and read El Football. Okay. El Deporte Numero Uno en la mayor mayoría de los um, países es, um, españoles es el fútbol el, so el soccer en Estados Unidos um, cuando no hay clases grupos de amigos organiza, organi organizan organizan un partido espontáneo de fútbol en un um, por, um, parque, parque en la calle, calle, calle 
o en el patio de la escuela. Cada vez que un jugador mete un gol, los otros miembros del equipo aclaran. Huh? I can hear you. Okay. Con ellos sus mismos parajistas. Poristas. Poristas. Es decir, son los número uno poristas. Poristas son cheerleaders. Okay, so they're their own cheerleaders. Okay, so you make a goal, your teammates cheer for you. There's no one. So they're talking about pickup games, you know. It's a, it's a big thing. Go ahead and mute me, Amaya. Um, so they're playing pickup games. Okay. Uh, anywhere, anywhere they can. Parque, in the street, in la calle, in el okay. patio de la escuela. Look at the top of this building. Yes. Okay, go ahead and mute, Amaya. Okay. Okay, gracias. Okay. So where are they playing? Look at the picture below. So los jóvenes juegan fútbol en las afueras de La Paz, Bolivia. They're playing in the outskirts of La Paz. La Paz es una ciudad muy grande. Okay, big city. Um, in Bolivia. Bolivia está en Sudamérica. It's in South America. And so, well, what does it look like they're playing on? It doesn't look like a park, and it doesn't look like a street, and it doesn't look like a patio. It looks like a rooftop to me. And is that what you see too? Because it's raised, unless it's some raised surface for some reason. I mean, it could be on top of a parking structure or something, but it looks taller than than the ground. Es muy interesante. And I would think they would have to be very careful. I, I think they're playing a gentle game of soccer because it looks like it's going to fly off the building somewhere. So, es muy interesante. Never played soccer on top of a building. Maybe I'll add it to my, my bucket list. Okay, Emma. El fútbol profesional. You got that, Emma? Second paragraph on 180. Okay, el fútbol profesional es muy popular. Muchas ciudades tienen su propio, propio. Equipo, propio equipo como el Real Madrid. Madrid. Real Madrid. Real Madrid. 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 Uh -huh. Por ejemplo, y cada país tiene su equipo nacional. Uh -huh. Cada equipo tiene sus colores cuando el equipo de un país juega contra el equipo de otro país. Van Miles de aficion, aficionados al, estu, al estadio para ver el partido. Um, I learned this the other day. I was speaking with Diane in my other class. He follows this uh, football. Um, so Real Madrid um, is a professional team. They um, they they make money. I mean, and that's one of the good teams. So soccer, um, and and soccer has it's it's much like baseball. You have different leagues. You know, there are different levels. You know, there's semi-professional, which are like your um, your farm teams. So they they might make a little bit of money, but it's really not enough to to make a living at. And they just play more, more locally. You know, they they might go to they might travel like South American soccer teams might travel amongst South America, but there's different levels. There's different leagues. So like um, in baseball here in the United States, the lower leagues, or it's like um, football, 
when you play football for college, you travel around to different colleges and play that level of football. When you play high school, you travel around at that level. And then once you play professional, you know, there used to be a couple of different professional. I think there's still some like indoor football, you know, net American football teams. But um, so they have professional teams. And then it says, y cada país tiene su equipo nacional. So in each each um, country has its national team, okay? And I think what happens is that it's kind of like um, kind of like the Olympic Games because we don't I, I don't I don't know we must have a U.S. national uh, soccer team, but I'm not familiar with enough with it to know anything. But um, so Real Madrid might have some of its player on its national soccer league. You know, so there's one team that represents the country. So like when you have um, La Copa Mundial, the, the World Cup soccer, that's every four years. It's kind of like the Olympics, but just for soccer. And so it's national teams. So it's not like Real Madrid wouldn't play in it. You would have um, just this national team that gets together and plays in those series. So the national team from Germany plays with the national team from France. So each country has one team. Okay. Um, okay, so the last sentence. When the team from one team plays against the team from another country, van miles de aficionados, I mean thousands of fans go to the stadium para ver el partido in order to see the, the, the game. Okay, um, Owen, puedes leer el béisbol? Uh, el baseball is more popular in El Caribe, Puerto Rico, or Puerto Rico, um, Cuba, El República Dominica, y también en Venezuela, Panama, y Nicaragua, el pequeño pueblo de San Pedro de Marcores, en la República Dominicana, es el pueblo que produce más baseballistas de las grandes ligas que cualquier otro pueblo. El pueblo de Town, el pueblo de San Pedro de Macorís está en la República Dominicana. So, la República Dominicana, just to give you an idea, la República Dominicana is on this little island with, with um, Haiti. Uh oh, me? My mic is cutting out, Emma. Ouchie. Okay, so we're, we're almost at the end here, too, so I'm just going to give a little. So, um, la República Dominicana. Es muy pobre, very poor. Um, it shares the island with Haiti. Haiti's very poor. Haiti speaks French, but it's a tiny little island, no bigger than maybe one of our very small states. Okay, no bigger than that. But probably the smallest state. What is it? Rhode Island, tiny state like that. Um, and that one little town of Pueblo San Pedro de Macorís. It says, es el pueblo que produce, is the town that produces más baseballistas de las grandes ligas. Grandes leagues, big leagues. That's what they call Major League Baseball. They call it the big leagues. If you make it to the big leagues, that means you're playing for the Pirates or the A's or the um, Giants. Okay? So it produces more Major League Baseball players than any other town. So that little town alone is known. Because guess what? I've talked about it before. Professional sports is a way of breaking and escaping that life, breaking the poverty, breaking, you know, it's bringing fame and money back to your people, to your islands. Yeah. Very, very, very poor country. Basically, pretty close. I would consider it a third world country um, just due to the, you know, the sheer poverty. And, um, with that one little town. I mean, obviously, La República Dominicana, um, el fútbol probablemente no es el, es el deporte más popular. Football is probably not the most popular sport. Probablemente es el baseball. Probablemente es el baseball. Okay, so es todo. That's all I have for you guys today. Any questions for me? Owen. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for me? 
So I will um, put up the homework here um, in the next 10, 15 minutes, get it listed there for you. I, I meant to do it last night and it totally escaped me. So, and then I'll have um, grades done. So anybody, okay, so here's another thing. If you, so Emma, I don't see the last two weeks or quite a bit of your, um, of your Quizlet is missing. <laughs> locked up, locked Owen. Are you guys fighting? <laughs> so, so um, Emma, and then um, <laughs> um, Nehemiah. I need um, I need your results. I emailed your mom, and she said you've been doing um, stuff. Um, yeah. I'll I need the results, especially the test results, so I can put the grades in the grade book for you. Okay, uh, I was going to ask you too, um, when are you going to send it out, the next homework? Yeah, I just said I'll, I'll upload it here in the next 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, so I meant, to do it, I meant to do it last night and I didn't. So send me those results your mom said. Mom knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, I just need to be able to put the last couple of grades in to help you know, boost your grade. And then yeah, same with okay. you. I don't. I don't have any results um, for a bunch of your Quizlet. So, um, if you've done them and not been signed in, then you can send me screenshots. But um, if you haven't done them, at least go back and do all the tests, so I can at least give you test grades. They, those count a whole lot more okay. than the rest of the exercises. I actually did do it. It's just that I didn't know I had to sign in for it to count. That's why. I yeah, well, you don't have to sign in. It's so much easier. Um, just go back and do the test for me, Emma. It, it's it, it'll be really quick. So just um just go back to the last two chapters, the last two times where it says to do the test on Quizlet. So um like maybe four point two and five point one. Go back and do those for me, four point two and five point one, and that that'll work. Um, other than that, um. So uh, just remember, keep up with your homework. Do it as a sign. If you fall behind, just let me know and, and, and get it made up. Because homework really does, it is really what um, helps with um, your understanding and, and, and deeper learning. So I appreciate you guys showing up. Yeah, you did your homework. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> OK. Adios, clase. Hasta, hasta lunes. OK, goodbye. Adios.